Robert Rivas here, and I'm here with Mr. Pulte Texas himself, David Lee Garza. <laughs> ¿Cómo le va, amigo? Muy bien, muy bien, Robert. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Oh, yes. uh, David Lee, I got to tell you, man, before um, we got together to do this, yesterday evening, I had to fall back on that interview we did like 20 years ago. And I wow. just didn't, I didn't want to cover the same thing again in a sense, but I was saying, has it been that long, David Lee, that we, we last did an interview outside of that taqueria right there in San Antonio? Right, right. Yeah, it's been quite a while. It's been quite a while. I can't remember really after that taqueria. That, you, you got a favorite taco place that was right there on Fredericksburg Road, one of the top five points. I forgot the name uh, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What was it? Uh, 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 it was, it was Alex and Jessica's name. restaurant. Yeah. A lady's name, something like that. Yeah, it was a lady's name. It's been a, <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of many, right? It's been a while, yeah. It's, it's been a while, David Lee. And I got to tell you, as I was going through the interview of what we talked about, it just simply unreal, unreal that when we were talking about things, one thing we talked about, was that Joe Lopez was a year away from being let go from prison. Fíjate, that's how long ago that was. It's been a while then. It's been a very good while, yeah. And, and how, many, how, how many different things have happened between then and now? Look now. At that. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, the, the time just goes by so fast, so fast. Uh, seems like it was just yesterday. Right? When, to, to us, we're not. Uh, parece que fue ayer, pero no, it just flies by, man, sometimes. Amigo, and even that saying that, we were talking about Emilio surviving the bus crash. That's how right. long ago it was. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. That that bus crash was like a, like on an Easter or something like that. Yeah. And I was, I was remembering that was like in, in the Houston area, actually. I had played somewhere over there, you know, stayed the night, and... And then that happens. It was, it was it was crazy. It was a crazy time for uh, for us for all the music. And actually, we were also talking about because that weekend you were going to be playing at El Fuerte. You remember that in on, on San Pedro with the old T Town. Yes, the old T Town. Yeah, there you go, yeah. El Fuerte, and you yeah. were going to be playing with Ruben Ramos. At it. So we were talking about all that, and I was going like, man, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's been long, long time ago, amigo. Yes, it has. I got to ask you, speaking of so many things that, that happened between then and now, Amigo, how did you deal with COVID? COVID was very hard for us. Uh, it hit without knowing we were out. I'm, I was one of those persons that I'm not going to get it. You know, I'm, I'm fine. I feel good and this and that. Well, all of a sudden, we tested and uh, me and my girlfriend, we, I tested positive and she didn't, right? So for a while, she was taking care of me here, and I, I stayed away, and, you know, I just uh, did normal things, you know, just watch TV, and from TV to bed, TV to bed, and and uh, all of a sudden, she got it, too. So, look, we were both quarantined here. We felt like crazy, uh, but we had so many people uh, outside uh, of the family that, that came and dropped off a lot of things that we needed, you know, just to keep on, just to to, to stay quarantined and not go anywhere, you know, we it was a scary time of year, a scary time in our life. You know, we didn't know what to what to expect. You know, but got over it, and uh, and then well, our music shut down for a year, or yeah. year and a half, or whatever. Yeah. And I want I want you to know, Robert, that it was a great it was just great timing, I guess, or something. Because I've been at this music business since uh, since I was uh, 10, 12 years old. You know, so fifty years. 50 years of, of doing this and then stopping. And uh, it was a break that I really needed. You know, I, I stayed home so much that when it was time to go back to work, I didn't want to go back to work. I was like, we got to go back already. You know, <laughs> music going to start after a whole year of being home, yeah. just being lazy, doing nothing. Yeah. You know, we started working again and it was a, it was a kind of, uh, but I, I, I really, my mom would ask me, do you miss playing? And I said, uh, Mom, I miss playing. You know, I, what I don't miss, Mom, is the traveling. Traveling, getting from point A to point B, you know, it's, it, I, I don't miss that, you know. Uh, being here at home is, is just uh, refreshing, you know. And But once we get rolling again, I'm pretty sure it will, it'll, it'll be come back, you know, to normal. But And yes, but still, you know, the traveling part of it is, is the most hectic part right now. 
David Lee, did you only get it once? That's it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I might have gotten it twice, but one time I didn't know I had it. But when I did get it, but and it wasn't too too bad for me. I I, I didn't lose taste or or or, or sense or, or smell. Um, I just tested positive, you know, and uh, I, I I try to stay away from everybody. I I um, I got it twice, mm -hmm. and uh, as careful as I was with everything, la mascara y todo, I went right. to go visit. I went to go visit my grandbabies Christmas Eve to go leave them the Christmas gifts. And one right. of my gra one of my grandbabies, she was 12 years old at the time, was just getting over it. I will y'all, we we mourn all, hugging my grandbabies, love y'all. Here's your gifts or whatever. The following day, I got it from my grandbaby. From wow, yeah. And she was already just getting over it, and I got I'm it. Getting from her. old, and you got it from her, yeah. yeah. It happens. It happens. Vamano. So you didn't get chills or anything like that. No, no, not really. I I don't remember getting anything like fever or nothing like that. Nothing, you know. It's just. I tested positive, so I said, I guess I have got it, you know, so just uh, take what I had to take, you know. ¿Y los musicales? Did they, any, any of your band members? Um, yeah, some of the band members did. My brothers, I don't, I don't remember my brothers ever getting it. That's crazy, you know, Adam and, and Richard, they never did, you know, and uh, uh, they were happy for them. Cesar Martinez, uh, our vocalist. También le dije, César, are you going to get it? Because that guy is everywhere, everywhere, every day. <laughs> uh, no para ese guy, there, there's no stopping him. He, he no, he's never gotten it. Very, very blessed. Very, very, porque um, it affected a lot of people in many, many ways. As the, I've had a couple of friends that passed away from it. Uh, there, yeah, was a, there was a DJ. David, did you ever know Bob Peña from Alice, Texas? Yes, of course. Bobby Bobby Peña, right? The big heavy set. Bobby Peña, big guy. Yeah, right. He he passed away from COVID. He, he yeah, died, yeah. He died from COVID. Como te digo, it was affecting a lot of people in it different did. ways. It really, Look really. Look at Ramon Ayala's, Ramon Ayala's drummer, the brother, El, El Huero. He passed away from COVID. Fíjate. Unreal, yeah. man. Just unreal. Yeah. And, there, and still, there were some people that didn't believe in it. No, hombre, it's a exactly. hoax. No, yeah. man, man, I'm not going to take yeah, a yeah, shot. Yeah, okay. don't, and... don't, don't take your vaccine. No, hombre, okay. don't take your vaccine. <laughs> 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 uh, they, didn't go through, they didn't go through what we went through. No, they? I guess not, yeah. Oh, right, David Lee, as the, speaking of from the last time we, uh, we talked, did the interview, and today, and I'm going to miss some of them here, I mean, we lost some people, man. We lost Jimmy G. We lost Emilio. Right. We lost Bob Gallarza. We lost Joe Bravo. Um, I know I'm missing some here, también. No disrespect to anybody here. But our, our, our Tejano icons, our Latin icons, they're falling left and right, man. Yeah, we're dropping like flies around here, man. It's it's crazy. It's uh, We never know. We never know, Robert. We never know what to expect, you know, uh, who's next and, and this and that right uh it's it's, it's it's scary you know we just uh have to live uh day by day you know and uh, thank the good lord you know to, to keep us safe and alive you know uh, that's all I, we can say and, and and do you know do you pace yourself now that you're at you know at the older age bracket and still performing do you need to pace yourself now a little bit a little bit you know i mean we we try to <laughs> we have to work I mean, this is what we do for a living so we're paycheck to paycheck. You know, a lot of people say, no, que okay, David, muy seguro tiene, he's got a mansion, y que tiene una casa bien grande. <laughs> ah, and I don't, I don't, you know, some of musicos, some are very fortunate to have very, very nice homes. And I'm, I'm just in a plain, simple mo mobile home, you know, that I've been, you know, for, for years and years. Uh, and uh, pace ourselves, that's what far as playing, working, we take it as it comes. You know, sometimes we'll have a weekend off and, oh, thank God, you know, I don't have to work next weekend, you know, and, but then when we do, well, we got to hit the road. We just came back from Monterrey, Nuevo León. We did that Nortex. It's a very, very, very big uh, festival, uh, concert series yeah, that happens in Monterrey. And we just came back from that, you know, and it was great, great, uh, great audience, you know, uh, sold out house, you know, and everything. It's an arena, the Monterrey, La Arena Monterrey, you know, it's a big arena. And it, I was, that brought me back some years. I was, I was commenting to, uh, to Billy, my bajo player, El Gringo, we're backstage getting ready to go on, and and the and the stage is like uh, the arena was packed, you know, and I and I, I was just sitting there, standing there, and waiting for us for that stage to turn, 
and it was going to be our turn to play. And I, I told Billy, Billy, I'm sitting, I'm t standing here and looking around all these people to come see us. And not just us, the rest of the, the group's playing. Mm -hmm. But I, I say, thanks a lot, Dad, you know, for for putting me here, you know, in this situation. You know, a little nerves kicking in and stuff. And Billy said, no, Dave, Dave, you know, your dad's with you right now. And I said, I know, I, I know he is, you know, but it's been a long journey. It's been a long dream of, of what we're doing and doing it for a living. You know, I, I never thought in my wildest dream that we would be doing this for a living. I, I will, I've loved music all my life, but uh, I, I always thought that we were just going to be a normal band, you know, just play weekends, play around here, you know, just weddings, quinceañeras, some parties and stuff. But we're blessed, you know, to have uh, gotten a chance to record, you know, and record some CDs and, and get picked up with big companies, uh, record record companies, the Capitals, the Sonys, you know, and uh, I'm very blessed just to still be doing what we'd love to do. Amigo, do you still have your mom? My mom, yes. You're My mom's very... 85 years old. We wow. still have her. Yeah. Very blessed. very blessed. Now, how long has it been since you lost your father? My dad passed away, I believe, and they're going to kill me. Uh, 2010 or 2012. I put I. So it, it, it's been a, a yeah several years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like I lost both of my parents in one year, and I always knew this happened a couple of years ago, and I always wow. knew. But they got to live to be in their 90s. That's a good wow. life, man. That's a good yeah, life, you know. But it's always too soon. It's always yeah, too it soon. Is. Yeah. And and but like I said, I I feel very blessed. But um, I think. I'll speak for myself in this. You always feel them in you when you go somewhere exactly. here or there. You feel them in you, you know. Like uh, exactly. My 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 dad my dad lets me know that he's with me because it's weird that I'll be I'll be going to bed and or I'll be laying in bed and I feel somebody sitting down to the feet to my feet. Right now, the, the 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 mattress feels like it's somebody sat down there. And I say to myself, "Okay, Dad, I know you're there." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always with me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I lost my oldest brother. It's been like 10 years. And he would come over here and visit me quite a bit. And I'll never forget about the third year after his passing. I would put a Christmas tree up by the window. You know, Christmas time. Todo lo ato. Right. And it was one evening, nice and quiet. I'm watching a movie. And it just happened to be where there was a quiet part in the movie. Nobody talking. It's kind of like scenic or whatever. And I'm looking at the TV and my Christmas tree is to the left. I'm watching TV and I hear, beep. And I look like that, and one of the ornaments is going back and forth. <laughs> and I go, okay, John, okay, you're here. What do you want, a beer? You want a shot? What do you want, man? You know, <laughs> Leave me alone, por favor. So I know what you're talking about, man. It feels right, like exactly. right there with you, verdad, David Lee? Exactly. See, see, as he is, you know, when uh, Robert, the first year that we, we, when we lost our dad, uh, the first uh, New Year's Eve was very, very hard for us because uh, – can you imagine, you know, since being 12 years old, spending New Year's Eve at a New Year's Eve dance celebration, you know, with your with your with your dad, you know, on stage. And this that one year that the first year that we lost him, it was like, oh, my God, I I, I broke down. You know, I was crying and I said, what's wrong? I said, no, I, I just miss my dad, you know, because he was every year he would hug me and say hey, one more year down the drain. Mijo. And I said, yeah, dad, one more year. And every year we do the same thing. He would tell me. One more year, Dad. Yeah, yeah, we're very blessed. You know? I've noticed that there's a lot of videos of you guys from back in the day called Johnny Canales. We all know that Johnny Canales is having some medical issues right now. I mean, I'm sure you've got some awesome memories being on the Johnny Canales show, no? Oh, most definitely, man. Yeah, I, I've been following Johnny uh, on the on the, on Facebook or wherever he's at, he's at right now. And uh, yeah, Puerto he looks very... Uh, his health has declined a lot, you know, but we're all getting older, you know, and uh, he's had some health issues. I, I believe he had a stroke, you know, and for, ever since then, you know, he's slowed down a lot. But uh, very great memories of Johnny, man. We did the Johnny Canales show everywhere you can think of, where everything, where every place that he's ever done one, Laredo, El Valle, San Antonio, uh, you name it, you know, we, we'd, we'd go do the, the Johnny Canales show. Very helpful. I noticed that, and it, it seemed really... I hate to use the word awkward, but there were like nine of y'all in this small little stage. Tanto moviendo y todo, pero se miraba todo y muy chiquito, the stage. Right, right. 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah, there was there was always there's always been a lot of us. Uh, every time we did the Johnny Canales show, <laughs> and um, Frank 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 Suniga said would say, "Si va a tener miro para allá para arriba en el stage y se miro tantas guitarras parece que parece que es un Montepío, a, 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 a pawn shop. He looks like a pawn shop up there. So many guitars." <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, I noticed that you posted that you canceled an event somewhere up north. You were apologizing, but you said either they didn't sign the contract or they didn't send you a deposit. Something like that, right? Somewhere up north right. in Texas, I put I. Oh, yes, yes, I do believe, yeah, I do believe somewhere up in the Dallas area, I think. I can't remember exactly where, but yeah, I, you know, and then Robert, with all these years that we've been working, playing music and everything, we hardly ever had to cancel anything. But when it comes now, nowadays, you know, when it comes to that, you know, it is very important that we get paid, you know, all, all musicians, not just us, you know, all of them. And it's very hard for us to travel, to spend all the money traveling to get from point A to point B and then getting disappointed and, and not getting our money. Of course, that's, that's very hard. You've got to get paid, and of course, you're a veteran, dude. Yes, you know, Cyrus, about contract signings. You get, you got to have that contract. You got to have that. Hey, here it is. You know, I need my money or whatever the case may be. But okay, I'm exactly. Sure, I'm sure you've run across promoters. I even know that are more squirrely than others, man. <laughs> and, and <laughs> you don't want to go halfway yeah. halfway up the state of Texas for nothing, verdad? For nothing, exactly. Yeah, you don't understand that. Promoters don't understand that. The fans. Uh, some get disappointed, you know, hey, y'all should have come and played, you know, and we try to explain to them, you know, as, as much as we can, you know, that uh, this is what we do for a living, you know, and it's kind of hard to, to go work and not get paid, you know, and knowing that, okay, we're going to take a chance. Let's go take a chance. I don't know this, like you say there, <laughs> this promoter, uh, they say they're going to pay you, but are they going to pay you? So, yeah. And there you go. Bien triste, man. Bien triste. <laughs> Comendo hot dogs, <laughs> <laughs> but not all meat hot dogs. Little turkey fail. No, the no, no, yeah. <laughs> beanie weenies. Little beanie weenies. <laughs> David Lee, speaking of contracts, um, how did what did you feel about what happened out there with Jennifer Pena out there and get a Victoria when they were talking about that they didn't have a contract, they had a contract, and the Cumbia Kings were canceled. I mean, A B and she wanted more money, but there were. Are you are you aware of any of this? No, we weren't aware of it. You know, till we got there, we played there Friday night. Oh, did you? And I okay. think all this. Oh, yeah, I think all this happened Saturday or Sunday. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it very hard. You know, I mean, when you have a contract, you honor the contract. You know, and uh, and if you get canceled for whatever reason, and it's uh, they have a good reason to cancel you. Well, I guess you got to take it, you know. Uh, they, they're not going to just cancel you just to say, you know what, we don't want you to play. Yeah. yeah. You know, they got to have a good reason. And and I leave, we leave it up to to the promoters, you know, whoever's putting the, the show on for them to decide that, you know. But if you give them a good enough reason to cancel you, I mean, just take it take it as it is, you know. Uh, I, I was what very, else can you do? I was very surprised because when they said Frank Salazar, I'm thinking TTMA, but it's not. Frank Salazar. TV no, TV. no, no. There's a Frank Salazar in Victoria. He's been a promoter for years and years. And uh, he's very upfront. You know, he'll tell you right away, you know, uh, why and what, you know, what's going on. And um, we've had bookings with him that sometimes they're not going to work out. And he'll call and tell us, you know what? Well, I know I, I promised you this much, but the sales, the ticket sales aren't that good. You know, you still want to take a chance or you just we just cancel. And we say, we look, you know, we talk it over, my brothers and I and Joey, our manager, and and we say, well, we better not take a chance because my guys uh, are a little spoiled, I would say. Uh, every time we go play, they get paid, you know. And if they don't pay us, you know, what are we going to do? We turn around and tell them, uh, el empresario que no los pagó or something. <laughs> you know, like a like a song that Wally Gonzalez, el empresario <laughs> que no los pagó. Más triste. Yeah, so, no, we, we know all about that, you know. So, look, okay. yeah, it, it was quite a... It was a kind of a shock, you know, because nowadays, you know, everything's contract. Back in the day, my, when my dad was managing my band, it was a pura palabra, just word by word, you know. Okay, we're gonna go play there for so much. Okay, we're good. And uh, oh my, and we'd get there, and the promoter would sometimes would tell my dad, "Don't let me pay you. Let me go ahead and pay you." And my dad was also old-fashioned, Robert, that he would say, "No, no, 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 no. 
vamos a esperarlo hasta que se acaben, que acaben de tocar los muchachos. And then you can pay me. And I was uh, all over here, Dad, go get our money, you know. <laughs> Pero he was so old-fashioned, he didn't believe in that. He said, no, no, let, let's do the, 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 the work first, and then we get paid. And there were some promoters that would skip town. We'd be playing and stuff, and uh, look over at my dad, and he had a face. He had a face, and I, was, I finished playing. I said, what happened, Dad? I can't find that guy. What guy, Dad? The guy that was going to pay me. He, you know, he, he wanted to pay me, and I said, that's why I tell you that if they want to feel, if they ask you to, to go and get uh, taken care of, paid, go. And he said, well, I'm just not used to that. Uh, well, Dad, things change, so look, and yeah. Más uh, antes, you know, there was just palabra, pero now contract paperwork. There's a paper trail there, and, and heaven knows what's going to happen now. You know, David Lee, I have a motto: never leave money waiting. Don't, don't, don't. If they're offering you the money to pay, take it. Take it. Exactly. You exactly. You, you don't oh, yeah. know. That's why I was very surprised with when, uh, when Jennifer was supposed to play Saturday, and um, supposedly they had canceled AB. So they canceled AB, and they were saying Jennifer was supposed to get paid five thousand. That's another story, but. She right. wanted she wanted two more thousand because AB wasn't going to be there. I don't know what one has to do with the other. You right, right, right. But all of this, mind you, David Lee, with no contract, no contract, nada, no. There was no there was I don't there. know. I don't know about that. I, I thought they had a contract, but the two thousand, like you say, I, I heard it was that was after the fact, like. They called the uh, Frank Salazar, and I'm not speaking for Frank. You know, he, yeah. he's not no. here. Pero, pero, you know, they, supposedly uh, he got a call and he said, you know what, I'll give you the two more, the two grand miles, you know. And then uh, I don't know how the story goes after that. I'll yeah. stay out of it. <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Somebody had a video recording of Jennifer talking to some lady, the coordinator of whatever it's for. Right, know, right. They got into it. It, 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 I don't, it just brought back, uh, uh, it, it reminded me of what you had put, saying, I'm not going to go over there without a contract. I, I know. I need my money. I got to take care of my guys. Got to take care of myself. But okay, contracts at the end of the day, as you say, is a paper trail. This shows right. that you had an agreement. Right. 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 Crazy. You know, uh, speaking of, I'm going to kind of touch through this real quick. I mean, so many gigs, so many events that you've done in your lifetime. Um, do you ever get frustrated on stage? Do you ever say like, man, I need a break. I, I just don't feel like being here today. Do you, do you ever go through that all the time? Sometimes <laughs> nowadays, uh, uh, right before I leave the house, I, I tell my girlfriend, Josie, I tell her, I don't want to be a musician no more. And she said, <laughs> go on, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> you know, that's what you wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I wanted to, but but no, I'm frustrated. No, like you say, just the, the traveling, the traveling part, uh, you know, is what, what gets to me now i'm older you know and oh before i couldn't wait to leave you know I, we'd, we'd last you know back in the day we'd play wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday just half off monday and tuesday and then wednesday hit it again and nowadays if we play two nights or three oh man it's going to take two or three days to recover from that you know they're so, looking okay, now frustrated no and even sometimes we have some uh, equipment that we that we have to use, you know, because we don't carry our pr own production anymore. Besides the monitor system and and backline, but uh, sometimes it's a little frustrating. But I say, you know, we we'll get through it. You know, let's just do our job, get paid, and get back on the road and go home. You know, you all played at the Fiesta Market Square the first Friday, but that? Yes, yes, we did. Well, let me tell you, I was out there for a while, and before you went on stage, you played on the main stage. Well, the San Saba stage, you know, the San Saba. Uh, the, the under the bridge, uh, the under the bridge one. Were you under the bridge or outside, uh, Ahuera? Under the bridge. Did you have lights that night? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we did. Te pregunto porque I got out there about seven thirty. I put I. We're walking around. <laughs> Went under the bridge, under 35. Under 35, right? You're talking about... Under right, 35. under 35, yes. Under right. 35. Went out there, and I felt bad for the band, because you could just see shadows. Wow. They were, they were playing. The people were there, but you could just... There was no lights on stage. No lights at all. Wow. Not Maybe us. there was a lack of power or something. I'm not sure, but I think by the time we got up there, there was lights. Maybe not a lot of lights, Robert, but uh, sometimes they have issues with, uh, with the electricity. 
the, there's not enough power there. Uh, they don't have enough uh, generator power. But as far as I can remember, I, we had a few lights. We don't need a lot of light. <laughs> I tell I, I tell Joey. Joey sometimes will come and tell me they don't want to turn on the light, blah blah blah, because we're not the headliners. And I said it's okay. We're we're ugly. We're ugly. People don't <laughs> no, gotta see us no. anymore. <laughs> well, that happened to be Maravilla, and I know the guy. And I felt bad for them, so I said, "Let's go to the oh, other okay, stage." Okay, yes, yes, yeah, right, we, right. We went to, to the outside stage on the back okay. side by, by La Quinta. Tava tocando Bob Gallarza, not Bob Gallarza, uh, not, not Bob Gallarza. Um, who was the singer of Latin Breed? Um, Adalberto. 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 Adalberto and Latin Breed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Adalberto. They were playing out there, and the same okay. thing. There were all shadows. Oh, there, wow. That's all you, and I said, oh, man, pobre vatos, man. Pobre and he, was, yeah. he, he kept on saying three or four times, where are the lights? Can somebody turn on the lights? <laughs> and I said, man, pobre vatos, man. But, pobre they were guys, out there, yeah. man. but obviously, you guys, they came through for you guys. Well, I mean, uh, they, they have, you know, a certain amount of time to figure it out, I guess, you know, and uh, like I said, if we didn't have any lights, that's okay. We keep on playing, you know, the moment we fail. David Lee, do y'all have your own sound system, lights and stuff like that? No, we don't. We don't. We, we did away with that years ago, years and years ago. Uh, it just got too expensive to, to travel. We used, we used to have a two bobtail trucks full of equipment. And then from there, ya no cabía and it didn't fit. We went to an 18 wheeler. So we were one of the bands, a few bands that would carry around all our production, sound, lights, everything. And then times started getting hard, and uh, we said, you know, we have to cut back. So we're going to – it's easier just to go and rent a sound system in Dallas, in Houston, in the Valley, you know, than, than carrying five extra guys, the fuel for an 18-wheeler, yeah. you know, and yeah. stuff like that. So, okay. We did away with that years and years ago, and, and uh, I, I do. We just travel in in a mini bus that we have. Uh, we have a my brother's uh, truck pulling a, a large trailer, and we carry uh, the, just the uh, the basic uh, monitor system, yes, uh, and the backlining like the drums, the, the amplifier, bass amp, guitar amps, and stuff like that. But that's about it. Do you take your own sound man, or you yes, get- yes. Yeah, we we've got our own sound man. He does the the main sound, and uh, we have a monitor guy also. Very important. Very important. Very important. To bring your own yes, guy exactly. Up. No, you don't want exactly, somebody yeah. that you don't know anything about, whatever. And... Yeah, unless uh, uh, there's the, sometimes uh, the, like sound man can't make it, and and we know the people that are putting up the sound, and we we trust them, you know, to to run sound for us. But most of the time, we have our own sound man. Going back to um, going back to um. Fiesta this past year. I was talking to Henry Bruin. I did an interview with Henry Bruin last week, and we were right. talking about we were talking about what happened at Explosion con con AB. Se le la onda a AB. <laughs> Started telling people off and telling them you're cowboy fans, you're losers. <laughs> Pobre gente, man. I mean, oh man. Um, David Lee, does it get to that sometimes that where you just say, man, you just frustration kicks in? To an artist? I, 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 I guess, I guess. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, uh, we're a band, and it's very hard. You know, I, I, I kind of see AB side of it, but uh, it's very hard. Our band, my band, we're a dance band. We're not too used to, uh, after all these years, we got the, you know, 50-some-odd years, we're not used to people just sitting there and watching us perform, you know. We're not a show band, in other yeah, words. Right. And it's a little frustrating, you know, and makes our, our night go slower. And uh, and AB, on the other hand, and they're 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 a show band, and they they like to see the people get into the to their music. And I'm pretty sure they were into the music. They're just not wasn't showing it, you know. And uh, I, I I guess he got frustrated and said, you know, hey, what are y'all doing, just sitting there listening, you know? Why don't you? <laughs> Why aren't y'all getting into you know clapping and raising your hands and and, and causing all this rut because you know that they're used to you know I get you know and uh, that that was that was that was the shocker there you know when that happened I said what you know just <laughs> get in there do your thing and right. get out get paid right. and get out you know yeah. Pero yeah. everybody's different ya están todos viejitos también some of his followers exactly. man. yeah you the know, fans yeah, yeah the fans are 
Y ya está más, ya está más señorados, como llamamos nosotros. <laughs> señorados. <laughs> yeah. Just sit there and, and, and enjoy it, you know, enjoy the music. Pero, oh well. You know, I was saying, if, if it comes to that and somebody and for whatever medical things he's got going, man, the guy's got enough money. Take a break, man. Take a year off. Just go out there and enjoy life. Come back, must you feel better? You know, maybe your right. mentality is more, <laughs> that must clad out the mentality or whatever. But, hey, man, to each his own. You know, what? whatever. Exactly. I just thought it was unfortunate for him to be laying a lot of F-bombs. Con todos los kids y todos ahí, le está echando mares a todos. And he, <laughs> then he goes and throws the Cowboys, the Cowboy fan. <laughs> the hey, yeah. He forgot cow- he was in Texas. I think he forgot he was in Texas. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he didn't say Spur fans, porque no me se lo eran a chingazos, hombre. Ahí le cae mucho, ahí le cae todo. They believe, you know, uh, there was a show in Corpus called um, uh, Domingo Live. I'm sure you're familiar right. with it, ¿verdad? Rudy Trevino. Correct. Well, um, I saw it for the first time here in San Antonio. I, I got some kind of an app where I can be able to do that. And I stumbled across part of the show where they were talking to this gentleman that they were doing a recording with Pio Trevino. And along with Pio Trevino, they were going to use parts of a Freddie Fender song, like a duet with All right, Pio Trevino yes. and Freddie Fender, who, of course, passed away. And they right. said also that you were going to be part of this recording. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I went. Uh, I got a call from uh, the Freddie Records uh, people that uh, from uh, Hector Hector Gutierrez. Hector Gutierrez. He's a keyboard player. He's a uh, he's a producer también, and he was helping produce uh, Peel's album CD. And uh, yeah, I got the call. You know, hey, uh, we want you to put some accordion on on, on Peel's song. There's a couple of them. They said, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, let's talk. And we talked and everything. Got it. Got it together and. When I got there, you know, I, I heard the songs and I actually I recorded them, recorded two songs. And they explained to me, you know what? I, I asked Pio, did you write this song? He said, oh, no. You know, I didn't write this song. Would you believe it's an old Freddie Fender song? What? I said, really? I told him, I've never heard it. He said, I know. And and it was, a, you know, like Freddie Fender, like a like a last year drop falls or right. wasted days and wasted night right. type of song. Right. You know, but my the producer here, uh, he was able to uh, to get the, the uh, Freddie Fender's voice off of the old recording, and and we put it in this song. And, and man, they they made it so fluent, you know that that you would think he was there, you know, recording it, you know. Uh, and it's a it's a great song. I haven't heard the the finished product yet because they they released the other song that I uh, that I recorded with them. But oh yeah, I, I was informed that it was Freddie Fender. An old Freddie Fender song, and uh, they're thinking about using his voice there too. They played a clip, only a clip. Did they? Yeah. On it, and I said, "Oh my God, I didn't even know the song existed." Y con más ganas, I was thinking, "Heck, man, you know, me and you had already talked about you doing an interview." I said, "This is perfect. Where I get to talk to you about this." Um, right. David Lee, um, this is going to be a tough question for you. You're not going to give me a right number, I know, because there's no way you can know. But out of curiosity, how many CDs? Have you been a part of recording in your lifetime? Roughly. 5,000, 10,000? No, hombre, no, no, uh, no. David Lee, no, no. it seems like your, your name's in pretty much all recordings on Tejano Music, at least. Well, I'm very blessed to have all these artists, you know, call me and, and wanting to put a, my accordion on a piece of, of accordion on it. Uh, I would say I've recorded for at least 40, 50 other artists besides my band. Maybe more. I don't know. Is no, this hard to... But put CDs a number on también, there. CDs, yeah, you know, yeah, but because... yeah, not the whole CD. I, I, I remember one in particular, uh, David Mares. I did pretty much one, a whole CD. But the rest of them were just one, one or two songs on each CD. Um, for as many song uh, singers that you've had in your band. I've always been curious about this. Do you ever have a plan B? And let me tell you where I'm going with this. Let's say you get to the event, you're playing at nine o'clock at night, I tan todos, and let's say your singer gets sick. I don't even know if you've gone through this. Your singer gets sick, man, I don't think he's gonna be able to make it. Are you still able to move forward without the singer with somebody else cutting it or no? Sometimes it's all in timing, yeah. Uh, one time, uh, my my 
singer Cesar was Rob, he's from Robstown, and we played in Corpus, and it was almost showtime, and, and he calls that he can't make it for whatever reason, right? And we're like, okay, what are we going to do? And at the time, we had uh, this, uh, Emma, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel playing keyboards, filling in for, for the sax part, right? And he, he was a singer back in, in Colorado. And we all turned around and looked at him and told him, he's a younger, younger guy than us, right? We turn around, uh, you think you can do the night? We can get through the night with you? And he said, man, I don't know the words. We're going to go with your with your four or your five. I always call them your top four or five singers. I hate to put it that way, but like with Ram, with Jay, with Marcos, with um, um, Jay, Marcos, Ram, Ram, Emilio. Did you ever get the feeling when you knew something was up that, you know what, I think this guy's getting ready to move on? With every one of them, you know, every one of them. <laughs> you know, you, you finally know, you, you finally know that you know, something's going on and, and people start to talk, you know, when people start talking, it's because something's going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so no, we, we, we got used to it after, after, Ram, after Ram left, you know, we, we, we pretty much knew what's going on. So something was up. Either something's going yeah, on. Yeah, something here, was up. Uh, yeah, but but it's all it's all good. You know, we we've never stopped anybody from from uh, <laughs> doing their own thing and and because they're they're, they're vocalists, they're they're so so no cantantes, you know, and they they want to shine and which is fine, you know, and we're very blessed that they helped us along the way, you know. So we can't complain, you know. But I don't have no complaints. Of course, when they leave, you know, we won't see them for about two three years, and then we'll run into each other. At a gig, hey, hey, how are you? Hey, I'm yeah. doing right, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's just uh, mixed feelings, you know. At first, you know, because you think uh, you're doing everything you can to 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 make the the rights smooth, you know, and everything. But sometimes, you know, they they like I said, they're 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 vocalists and they want to shine, which is fine with us too. It didn't, didn't like, like like Yoko Ono's telling them, "Hey, come on, you can do it on your own, man. You don't need you don't need David Lee. You can do it on your own." Yeah. Oh yeah, we we we've been through all that. Some we have some fans <laughs> that, that you know that they're your number one fans and this and that, and they're the ones that are telling them, "Hey, you don't need those guys, man. You're the voice, man. You're you're the one that make the band." <laughs> no, no, but try it, Kalale. It's easy. Just get get some guys together, meet up, get a band, and and start start all over again. You know. I can remember David Lee when Jay went into T Town, when he left. Well, when when y'all had your breakup, we'll go that way. When y'all had your breakup, y'all right, separated, right. and Jay showed up at T Town, and um, he went into the office. I happened to be there that day in the morning, and um, they were interested. The owner, Danny, you remember Danny Levinson? Yeah, Danny. Uh, yeah, they, they were talking, and they said, "Well, how much do you need?" And he threw out this big fat number, Jay, because right. hey man, uh, you're not gonna get that. Well, why, man? I'm a lead singer. Yeah, but you're not David Lee. <laughs> you're not David oh. Lee. You know, because he was just starting. Yeah. I'm not knocking exactly. Jay, but yeah. you know, he was just getting started. But I got to tell you, uh, he built up fast, but he started getting gigs at Desperados. And right. they, started, they started looking at the numbers. TABC, how much liquor and alcohol was being sold on those nights that he was there. Right. They, right. they said, obviously, this guy's pulling people in. So that's when T-Town said, well, come on. Vente. And he right. started doing his own, his own thing too. So, like yeah, I said, yeah. you know, and, and the beauty of that, you know what I mean? You know, all these singers that have branched out from you, you know, and you, really, man, you know, do you have a lot to do with that? You know, because they, they came from you. Well, we're just like I said, we're very blessed to have them come through the band, you know, and uh, so many of them. And uh, and they go on and have a, a make a name for themselves, you know, and, and produce good music, you know, it's a little more important to us, you know, not just to go out there and, and say, hey, I used to play with David. Well, come on, you know. No, no, no. They, they have to prove themselves. That's right. A, a quick little cr uh, crazy story, man. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. At T-Town, we used to record the bands on stage. We right. Two cameras. We record y'all. Todos. Todos ustedes. All of them. Where's all, where's all that film? You know what? I've got three or four only, dude. And uh, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Anyways, uh, uh, we had one of Jay with you, okay? Okay. And what we would do on Thursdays and Sundays, there were no bands. We put half of the TVs on one of the artists that performed at T Town, the other half on the other artist. One night, two days after Jay left because he wanted a lot of money, Danny got uh -huh. pissed off. Danny didn't want nothing to do with him. Thought he was right. being disrespected. I didn't know. 
So I put the tape on, and Jay Pettis is on all one half of the screens on, on T-Town. I right. viene, I viene Danny Encabronado. Todo bule. Take that crap off right now. I don't want to see that tape ever again of Jay <laughs> Pettis. And he, he pulled oh. out, David, he pulled out the VCR tape. He got the tape and started. Tore it up. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. You tore up some history here, man. You know, yeah, really exactly did. right. That was the only tape I had of you all with, with you and Jay at T-Town. And that's it. Wow. And guess what? A month later, Jay's playing on stage. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. Okay. It's, uh, you know, David, did you, uh, were you able to see the Selena series on Netflix? Yes, I did. What'd you think about it? Very interesting. You know, uh, we, we lived it, you know, and, uh, some things, you know, we never knew that happened, you know, but it's, it's, uh, that's Hollywood, man. You know, uh, they portray it, you know, as they want, I guess, you know, or as it was, you know, there's, like I said, some, some of the things that we lived through with her, you know, were, were on point. And then there were some other things that, wow, I didn't know that happened. And then you start <laughs> thinking, oh, okay, probably didn't happen, but okay. You know, it's Hollywood. Abraham had told me that um, La Mafia, they were upset because they were never given credit the way they felt they should have been given. I guess for letting Selena open up for them. Open, right. They never tied them in, or I don't even think they were on the Netflix series either. They showed other Tejano artists. Oh, well, okay. But they didn't show La Mafia. Um, do you remember any of this? Do you remember did Selena ever open up for you guys? Uh, we played along side each other. Yeah, uh, we might have. They, she might have opened up for us. But I remember opening up for them, you know, and which really? was all good. Really? Yeah. Victoria, I remember in Victoria, Texas, we opened up for them. Us and La Sombra and Joe Posada, I remember, and Selena being on the bill. And, uh, at that time, you know, La Sombra was, was from Chicago coming in and, you know, and, and headlining a lot of shows. But I remember them and Abraham uh, knocking head, bumping heads, you know, about the lights, you know, take off those lights because we're going to use them. Blah, blah, blah. And we stayed out of it, you know. We just opened, did our gig and, and got out of there. But, oh, yeah, we we opened up for them, you know. And, and I'm sure they opened up for us at, at one point, but oh, it's all good. Oh, amigo, did you ever do the Abraham show in Foque Musical? No, yes. Yeah, we did a couple, two or three shows there. Did you? Yeah. I, well, I, one, one with Markel. I remember one with Markel <clears throat> and one with... Uh, Cesar Martinez. Okay, I, I I don't remember. I know he's got like a cat uh, a store online where you can buy right. these concerts, right. whatever. I don't remember ever seeing that with you on. There. And and the uh, you know the first one that the one I was telling you about, the one with Markel Mark Mark Ledesma, something happened to the to the audio of it or something. So he asked us to go back and, and years years later, right? And we did it again. I, I believe it's the last one that we did there with Caesar. Okay. And and that's um, I took Joe Lopez when I was with EMI, and that was okay. a struggle, man. That was a struggle to get Joe over there. It really was. He didn't want to do I it. Imagine, he, wanted, yeah. he wanted some money. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yeah. Get, get that's kinda, <laughs> that's a joke. Exactly, yeah. It's kind of kind of hard, <laughs> but oh, you know, sometimes you got to give in and you know, and do that, and you know, and improve yourself, you know. And then you know, like Abraham said, you know, I'll record you. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna cost you anything. But uh, at the end of the day, you know. You, you you get some some product, you know, you sell it and you make some money. Can okay. you re can you remember the record labels you getting started or being in the middle of everything, taking you on the road, doing interviews at radio stations? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we used to go back in the day with a with a yeah, desaparecido Luis Silva. Luis okay. Silva took us on the road to here to the valley to West Texas. He knew every restaurant. In between, you know, he's like, we're, we're going to eat here and we're going to eat here. The barbecue's real good here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we that's did funny, several man. of those, you know, back in the day, that that's what the, you had to do. You had to do a lot of legwork because there wasn't, there wasn't no internet still, you know, and, and you had to do the legwork and, and go every, hit every radio station, you know, that you could and get your music out there. In the cornfields, on the sea, verdad? Todos los chiquitos pequeños. Sí. Okay, mira una antena. You see an antenna? <laughs> That's a radio station. Yeah, yeah. It's not uh, real big, but it's it's a radio station around here. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, man. I used to do that with EMI when I was taking the the vans on the road, 
And uh, sometimes they didn't want to. They didn't want to wake up in the morning. We gotta go do the morning show at seven. Be up by five. Yeah. Five. Oh yeah. Right. So you can look sharp. You don't want to be all like añoso to dormido showing up. You know, at the radio station. Right. You gotta look sharp, man. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. We did several of those. I don't think nobody's doing that no more, are they? The game has changed. You know what? Uh, yeah, it's changed so much. Uh, the last ones that I remember doing that was uh, ourselves and Ruben Ramos. Ruben Ramos would put out an album. In, in his own label and he would he had a plan you know the, to still go hit the radio station but now we're there's very few very few uh, uh radio stations you know that it's not a we, we actually don't have to go now it's it's all internet you know it makes it harder for the new up-and-coming singers bands to get their foot in the door but they really don't want to pay attention to you no more man you know they, no. you know you, you got to know people you got to know yeah. people to get in there, you know, if you, unless you got a name, David Lee, Joe Lopez, you know, you got, you've got a name that helps you a lot, but if you're a newcomer, nobody, you know, come on, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to wine them and dine them now, nowadays. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. David Lee, um, the last time we talked, I think you had three Grammys. Any more? No, they're still here. <laughs> Just those. <laughs> I haven't sold. I haven't sold. I haven't gotten rid of those. <laughs> no, just three is the last. The last, the only ones I've had. Yeah, the uh, two with Joel Guzman, and uh, one on my own. The, the just friends, where I asked all my friends to come in there and record. Not all my friends, but as many friends as I could get on the, this album. It's called Just Friends, and that's the last uh, Grammy that I won. And and they all got a Grammy too. The Just Friends. No, no, won? actually, no. Act, uh, it helps to be a Grammy member, you know, to get a Grammy. But in, in our case, you know, and we found out later that they, they, they could get a uh, certificate, but uh, not an actual Grammy because it was a it was a solo project, my solo project. You know, it wasn't a, a group effort, you know, a, a band, you know, an actual band. But uh, everyone deserved one, you know, because they, 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 they all put their part uh, doing this uh, CD, you know, for us this album and um but they were they were able to if they if they wanted to they could uh, get a a certificate of a grammy you know they really um not only because i'm talking to you but there's other artists and i'll throw gary hobbs i'll throw ram i'll throw jay perez uh joe posada some of the uh, old schoolers as i call them tejano old schoolers and the beauty of seeing you guys still out there keeping busy performing is really awesome man i congratulate all of y'all not only you but those who stays and the ones that i'm probably missing right now joe lopez that are out there still doing it man still i mean what are the odds what is it 30 40 years later and still out there performing surviving? we're still i the flag we're still carrying that little flag <laughs> that, that the Hanoi flag you know uh we're still doing it man very blessed you know that the, the fans that the fans' kids are now going to see us, you know, and yeah, my, our parents used to come see you. What? I said, yeah, or you paid, you paid at my parents' wedding, you know, 40 <laughs> years ago. We probably did, I told them, or, or my mom's quinceanera. Wow, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because of you, you know, they went into the parking lot. Now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm here. <laughs> no, but really, man, that, that is the thing of beauty for all of you guys to be surviving out there. And really, I, I you know, I really think that you guys are the ones that are helping keep whatever sparks of Tejano music is left. Porque there's not too much out there no more, man. There really is. No. I, I feel bad that there's no more horn bands like like a Ruben Ramos, like Little Joe. Little Joe's still out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and bands like that, horn bands, you know, you don't you don't hear of any kids uh or are you hearing you know what? There's a great trumpet player in and let's say New Braunfels or there was a lot of, and back in the day, Seguin produced a lot of great musicians, you know, Seguin, Texas, La, La Tierra, Tierra Tejana. Tejana. Tierra Tejana. Exactly. You know, bands like that, I, I miss hearing those bands. I have them all in my computer and I play them every day, you know, so, pero as far as a, at, at a gig or you going somewhere and listening to the, hey, you know, so-and-so is playing over here. You don't hear that kind of a band, you know, you hear conjuntos, you hear groups like, you know, like our, our bands like that like a Jay Perez and stuff like that. But uh, you don't hear the, 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 the horn section, the Latin breeders, where did they go? You know, it's a Cavaron, you know, the Sunny Osuna, Sunny and the Sunliners. Those are like my favorites, you know, them and, and the Latin breeders. 
the royal gestures. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know. The Monsanto? Our kids don't date it. Yeah, Remember Monsanto? Exactly. Monsanto, that's why, that, yeah. That's what I was saying, David Lee. You know, y como te digo, uh, and I knew I was missing some. I'm glad you mentioned Ruben Ramos and uh, Little Joe. And, like I said, there, there's some of them out there, but it's not as, as uh, como se dice, widespread as it was back in the day. They've dwindled big time. They've dwindled. Right. Them, but the thing is, we keep on losing them. You know, we'll lose somebody yeah. here, somebody over here. We keep on losing them, man. And, um, Really, La Onda, Tejana, they, it, it needs help. It really, really does. Where's, where's it going to come from? I don't know. But uh, you guys can mm -hmm. only be out there for so long. Exactly, yeah. Or, you know, a lot of people ask me, are, are you kids are interested in music? And I say they love it, but they didn't want to follow this, uh, what we do, you know. And uh, But there's some other guys out there that their kids, like Emilio's kids, they're still doing it, even though they're not Tejano, Tejano, you know, they're they're – doing their own thing they're rock and roll they, they love rock and roll it's just fine you know and uh but uh yeah i don't know uh, where it's gonna go when, when we're all gone you know is it gonna still survive music will survive but oh well the, this tejano sound you know right will it survive the times you know right. i don't know what i'm gonna do david lee after this interview i'm gonna open up a group page on facebook to, we're going to get a David Lee got us a statue in Poteet. We're going to put it right there. Right there. I met on the, in the city <laughs> limits. Put me on top of the strawberry. In the city limits, but con la cordeona, see? That way the cop can hide behind her con the speed gun. <laughs> Dang, <the> speed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want a, a statue, but I want to be on top of the strawberry. <laughs> the water tower. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, man. It's just uh, unreal. I'm going to ask you some quick questions. Uh, that way people can know a little bit about you who don't know about you. And I'm going to learn some about you, too. But this will be quick ones. What's your favorite kind of beer? Free. <laughs> Free beer. Cold beer. No, no the, we had a lot of a lot of sponsorship uh, in our Silver Bullet? In our, in course, our, you, in our yeah. time, yeah. Coors Light, uh, the, the Miller Lights, and, and the Bud Light. All, all of them, you know. Great beers. It's all good. When David Lee takes a shot, what do you take a shot of? Whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm not real picky. I'm free. not very picky. No. Free, okay. Yeah. When when you listen to Tejano music, what are your three favorite artists you like listening to with your headset on? Tejano, the orchestras, like I said, a little Joe's, the, the Ruben Ramos, the Tierra Tejanas, uh, Sunny Ozuna, uh, Royal Gestures. That that that's what I like to listen to. It's the horn bands, you know. The, uh, there's a lot of bands that are not around anymore, like like Gary Guajardo and Pleasure. I love them. I love, I love their music, you know. Uh, uh, not around as uh, Arturo Montes Ternura. Right. I love their music. I mean, the Fabulosos Cuatro, you know, back in the day, Eddie Perez and, and all of every every Fabuloso Cuatro uh, album that's out there, I, I have it. I listen to it. Do you ever go to an event? Let's say you're off on a weekend and somebody's playing that you like. Do you ever go as a fan to an event? I, I I do well where I used to back in the day. Now, like I said, I, I slow down a lot, and I, I'd rather you know stay home. <laughs> I get friends that invite me. Hey, there's so and so's gonna play over here. Do you wanna go? Like, it's outdoors, yeah. Come on, so we go late in the late in the late in the evening. I'm not gonna be out there all day long. <laughs> I'll go late in the evening, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> ¿Verdad? Porque things change as you get older, man. I'm the same way. Dude. It does, you know, it does. I went to Fiesta this past year. I think we were out there till 8 o'clock, 8.30. I don't know. Let's go, man. Enough is enough. I'm going to look like that. Yeah, exactly. I had enough, and, and, and yeah. uh, that was that. Okay, give me one. Uh, uh, give me a couple of your favorite TV movies. Well, not Forget TV, TV mo but movies, movies. What do you what like to favorite? see? My all-time favorite has to be uh, Papillon. That's an, it's an old movie, Papillon, an yeah, and uh, and then uh, McFarlane USA. I love. I can watch, watch that movie over and over. And uh, the Roots series. Did you ever see the Roots? Of course, series. Of course, I have it. I had that in. I had that in my bus. I, I have it too. I had it. I had used to carry that on the bus, and I would put it on. And my guys would come to the back of the bus where my room was, and what are you watching? And they'd look. Uh, oh, we've seen that before. <laughs> they go to bed. <laughs> What yeah. about series? We'll go with uh, Netflix series. Anything that like you a like? Netflix series. Yeah. Uh, Chop, Chapo, or I don't know. Oh what? yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, the the his story, man, and Chapo the, the series. That was a great series there. Uh, uh, Señor de los Cielos. That was interesting. That was uh, that was one that uh, they would laugh at me, but uh, 
uh, ¿cómo se llamaba la? The one that Steve Jordan recorded, uh, Camelia, La Camelia. She had a series, and that spun off like Señor de los Cielos and those uh, the other ones. But yeah, those uh, Mexicano series were pretty cool. Did you get nervous going into Mexico? Uh, for a while, we did. You know, uh, after all that stuff that happened, we stopped going. We stopped going for about five, six years. And we said, nah, we don't want to go. We don't want to take a chance. And, oh, it's safe now. And go during the day. And you know, go, no, no. We, and we did. We did go back. But nowadays, they want us to go over there. We have to fly. We fly in and fly out. David Lee, any any uh, any words you want to say to your fans? Uh, Robert, I want to, first of all, I want to thank you for letting me come on here and, and saying hello to all the fans. And thank them for all the all the years that they've uh, uh, been the backbone to our, to our music. You know, uh, they're very blessed to have a, a uh, very large uh, fan base, you know, that support us through all these years, through all these singers, and uh, they're still out there. You know, we're very, very, very humbled that that you know they they still come out to our performances and and buy our our all our our, our music, uh, our gear, and everything. So, okay, thank you so much to them. Thank you very much again for letting me come in here and telling everybody uh, the 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 in and out of a of our of our <laughs> career here the ups and downs not in and out the ups and downs but oh very blessed to still be here with you amigo i salute you i salute uh, uh your band and and everything that you do for the music industry um i think you're very humble in many many ways and what the, the how you've impacted the, the music business because you really really have and you're still going strong and it just show, goes to show you that you have the respect of a lot of people out there man well earned well deserved Uh, it was the way our parents brought us up, you know. Uh, my dad always told me, uh, "You might be good, mijo, at what you do, but there's always somebody better." And I, I really, really believe that. So, Dave, just blessed to be here, and and again, thank you all so much. God bless. David Garza, thank you for joining me.